Previously, we've introduced the terms the total sum of squares, the residual sum of squares, and the explained sum of squares. Now in this video, I'm going to prove a very special relationship between these three terms. I'm going to prove that the total sum of squares is equal to the residual sum of squares plus the explained sum of squares. So this video will be focused on this proof. So let's start with the left-hand side. So left-hand side, we start with the total sum of squares. And by its definition, it's equal to yi minus the sample mean of y squared and the sum of all these terms. So I'm going to drop the subscripts just to save myself some time. And then now I can rearrange this term by subtracting a yi hat and then adding back a yi hat and then minus the sample mean of y squared. So the yi hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat xi, in case you don't remember. So this is the point that lies on the regression line that has the same x-coordinate as the i-th data point. So once we have this term over here, now we can square this. So I'm going to group everything into two different groups, like this. And I'm going to square this entire term. So once I square this, I'm going to get yi minus yi hat squared plus yi hat minus the sample mean of y squared, and then plus 2 times yi minus yi hat and then times yi hat minus the sample mean of y. So we have a sum of all these terms. And now if you look at the individual terms, you see that this first term over here, this is just yi minus uh, yi hat. So this is just the residual sum of squares. So this entire term over here is first of all equal to the residual sum of squares. And then the second term here, you have yi hat minus the sample mean of y, and this is just the definition of the explained sum of squares. And then finally we have this term over here. So we have plus 2 times the sum of yi minus yi hat times yi hat minus the sample mean of y. And now I'm trying to prove that the total sum of squares is equal to the sum of these two terms. So you would expect that this term over here should be equal to 0. So that's what we're going to try to focus on for the rest of this video. So now I'm going to try to prove that this term here will always be equal to 0, so that the TSS is equal to RSS plus ESS. So now let's focus on this term. So now the term we're going to focus on is yi minus yi hat, and then yi hat minus the sample mean of y. And now we want to prove that this is always equal to 0. And then I can do this by invoking the full expression for yi hat, that's just equal to beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat xi, and I'll do the same for this term. Once again, you get beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat xi minus the sample mean of y. And then I'm going to invoke the definition of beta naught hat. So beta naught hat is equal to sample mean of y minus beta 1 hat times the sample mean of x. So I'm going to rewrite beta naught hat by its definition. So here we have minus the sample mean of y, and then plus beta 1 hat x, the sample mean of x. So there's a minus sign over here, that's why we get a plus. And then we have a minus beta 1 hat xi. And then for the second term, we do the same thing. Sample mean of y minus beta 1 hat sample mean of x plus beta 1 hat xi minus the sample mean of y. And now we can group some of the terms together. So first of all, over here, we have a yi minus the sample mean of y, and also we have these two terms with a beta 1 hat attached to them, so I'm just going to take away a minus sign and the beta 1 hat, and then we have xi minus the sample mean of x. And then for the second term, you can see that these sample mean of y's, they cancel out. I can pull this beta 1 hat out to the outside, both of these terms have a beta 1 hat, and then we also have a xi minus sample mean of x. So now I'm going to distribute this term over to these two terms. So it's just taking away the, this large, larger bracket over here. So now what we have is the sum of, first of all, we multiply this term with this term. So we multiply these two terms. So we have beta 1 hat xi minus the sample mean of x, and then yi minus the sample mean of y. So that's the first term. And for the second term, we have minus beta 1 hat squared, we have these two terms, so we have minus 
beta 1 hat squared, and then we also have xi minus the sample mean of x squared. So now we have the sum of these terms over here. And then I can break these terms out into two different parts. So first of all, we have the sum of xi minus the sample mean of x, yi minus the sample mean of y. And then I'm going to pull this beta 1 hat to the outside because it's not related to the subscript i, the subscript index. And then I can do the same for this. I'll pull out the beta 1 hat squared times the sum of xi minus sample mean of x squared. So now we have these two terms. We have this term subtracted by this term. And these two terms are actually completely identical because if you take a look at the definition of beta 1 hat, definition of beta 1 hat is just xi minus the sample mean of x, yi minus sample mean of y, divided by the sum of xi minus sample mean of x squared. So if you substitute this term inside over here for this first term, you get this entire term for beta 1 hat multiplied by this sum over here, which is the same exact term in the numerator. So in the end, for this first term, we get the sum of xi minus the sample mean of x, yi minus the sample mean of y, and then the square of this entire sum. And then we divide this by the sum of the sum of xi minus sample mean of x. And I'll just use the shorthand s double x just to save myself some time. And then we can do the same thing over here. We have beta 1 hat squared, so we apply this definition and then we square the whole thing. So for the numerator, we have the sum of xi minus sample mean of x, yi minus sample mean of y, and then we have the square of this entire term in the numerator, and then we also have the denominator, which is just s double x, and then we also need to square this because we have beta 1 hat squared. And then over here, this term over here, this is actually also s double x. So we have this entire term multiplied by s double x. So of course this takes away one of the s double x's in the denominator. So you see that these two terms are actually completely identical. So it's always equal to zero. And so we've proved what we set out to prove. We've proved that this term is equal to zero. And so this entire term is equal to the residual sum of squares plus the explained sum of squares. And so we've, we, uh, we have completed our proof. The total sum of squares is equal to the residual sum of squares plus the explained sum of squares.